Welcome to this brief tutorial brought to you by Satara University. This video is not intended as a substitute for training and it is only to provide an overview to getting started with Phoenix's IVIVC Toolkit. It will give you a brief run through on the Phoenix IVIVC Toolkit's interface using data from 25 subjects who took part in a seven way crossover study to assess different formulations. This example project is shipped with Phoenix. We will first create graphs of concentration versus time to better understand the data and then step through the IVIVC Toolkit's tabs of in vitro, in vivo, correlation, and prediction. When first opened, the Phoenix workspace is empty. To get started, one can either load an existing project or create a new project. In this tutorial, we will load an existing project that is shipped with the software. Browse to the Examples folder and open IVIVC. Then select the IVIVC workflow project. Let me expand the data folder to show the data that we will be using. I will select the IVIVC DIS worksheet which contains the in vitro dissolution data. To better visualize this information, I will right click on the worksheet and send to an XY plot under the plotting menu. There can be a lot going on when building up an IVIVC, so I will rename the plot straight away. By mapping formulation to group, they will appear as separate lines on one page. Then map time to x, and fdis, the fraction dissolved, to y. Then execute by clicking the green arrow. We can see four controlled release forms, with CR1 being the fastest and CR4 the slowest. The target falls between CR3 and CR4. Target is what we are trying to match, and it may be the innovator. I want to show you how you can overlay information from a second worksheet into the same plot. To do this, click on the Graphs tab. I will select the Setup tab so you can see how it changes. Now, when I click Add, we will see the new input that is added. Note how XY data has a blue arrow indicating it has a data source, whilst XY1's arrow is still empty. This is because no source is mapped yet. I will drag the worksheet IVIVC Test which contains a new formulation for which only dissolution data is available. I will then map the data the same as the first worksheet. Before re-executing, the new test profile is added to the plot. In this case, the target and test one are very similar, so I'll just format targ to make it easier to see. By expanding the tree under Options, almost all the plot elements can be formatted. We can now see the black stars of the target sit within the markers of Test 1. Let's take a look at the available in vivo data. I can right click to send this to a new plot object in exactly the same way. These are the results of plotting them with formulation as the column lattice and subject as a group ID. We see that in vivo, CR4 has the slowest release and the slowest absorption. And that every individual took all forms, including the IV reference. At any time, you can return to the setup, for instance, to change form to group and place each subject on its own page. We can see each formulation displays the same elimination when displayed semi log. I will rename the second XY plot as vivo. Now we have a better feel for the data, let us take a look at the IVIVC object itself. It is quite a complicated object. There are four tabs, in vitro, in vivo, correlation and prediction, relating to building and predicting from an IVIVC model, as well as tabs displaying status and the general options. There is also the status panel which indicates which steps have been set up and executed. That they are all green indicates that all the correlation steps have been run. Looking now to setup, we see several inputs that feed into IVIVC. The first three relate to dissolution. Currently the disk worksheet is displayed and mapped. Let us look at the second input. Here you assign whether a formulation should be used for internal or external validation of the correlation model. A minimum of two forms should be mapped to internal. The input, in vitro estimates, is related to the dissolution model chosen below. 
The Ivy IVC toolkit utilizes the least squares regression model engine throughout. On the bottom right, the status panel is very useful to help navigate the output. Clicking on View will take us to the output of fit dissolution. For this data, a viable model was deemed best. We can see the parameter estimates have a very low CV percent, indicating we have a good confidence in them. And the observed versus predicted fits look good. Let's move to the in vivo tab. On this tab, the unit impulse response is generated. That is, the elimination of the drug is described. Ideally, from an intravenous reference, but an immediate release oral formulation may also be used. Once the UIR is defined, we can deconvolve the other extravascular formulations. Clicking on View Deconvolve will change the filter in the results. See that only deconvolution objects are now listed. In this case, the dose was 1. So the cumulative input and the fraction absorbed are both approximately 1 and therefore complete for all forms. The default of Generate Mean Profiles is generally recommended if you have individual data. It will also execute faster. Let us move to the Correlation tab. There are four built-in models that estimate how the in vitro profile can be scaled in height and duration to match the vivo profile. T-shift will account for delays seen in absorption and so forth. User models can also be written. The correlation can be assessed by the CMAX and your choice of various AC methods and endpoints. Levy plots that can aid with the model selection can be generated easily with a single click. For instance, if FABS versus FDIS does not intercept at zero, then an AB space is likely to be a required parameter. Similarly, if TVVO versus TVTRO does not intercept at zero, then a T-shift parameter will likely be required. At present, the chosen correlation model seems reasonable and can be executed by clicking Build Correlation. The CV% percent is low for the IVIVC parameters, with a T-scale of around 0.25, reflecting a fourfold difference in timescales between in vivo and in vitro data. By comparing the predicted profile from convolving the dissolution data through the correlation model to the observed results from the in vivo data, the predicted error can be calculated. Acceptance limits depend on the guidances and whether a formulation was chosen as an internal or external validation set. Remember, only those set as internal were used when building the model. Note, because I have now re-executed the correlation steps, I need to re-execute the last step, prediction, as indicated by the red status boxes. Within the prediction tab, be sure to use the same dissolution model for test as for the original dissolution data. In the setup for prediction data, we see the sources test containing just the dissolution data from the new formulation. And, just like the original data, we can set the formulation strengths, as well as the initial estimates. At this point, the status panel is yellow, indicating the dissolution is set up, but not yet executed. The predict PK button is not enabled at this point because the target formulation has not yet been set. Remember that the target is what we hope the new formulation test will match. It could be an actual profile from the innovator or a generated ideal profile. The prediction error is less than 20%, which in this case would suggest that the new test one formulation is likely to be bioequivalent to the target. Currently, the status tab displays no outstanding issues. However, it can be useful to locate what is wrong with your correlation model if it does not run. Let me show you how by modifying the setup, where I will unmap a required input variable. These missing mappings are then indicated on the status tab. I hope this walk through the IVIVC toolkit was useful. Consider watching it again whilst replicating the steps in Phoenix yourself. Remember, you can find further examples through content in the online help. If you want to learn more about how to use the IVIVC module effectively, then please consider the 102 on-demand course for IVIVC Toolkit available from Sotara University. Beyond the IVIVC course, 
there is additional structured learning and certification available, covering both scientific and software-specific topics through Satara University's courses.